then to support those organizations, I started writing the names of organizations on my clothes. And that led to going into the parades as a skateboarder or a rollerblader or a, uh, somebody on a bicycle doing wheelies with Greenpeace, Sierra Club, uh, the Nature Conservancy, whatever, written on me. Uh, and then calling out those organizations or calling out environmental slogans in the parades that I'd crash. I was never an official invitee to, to, to the parades in various towns. I would just show up and be like the little eco guy calling on people to be kind. Just an extension of my day-to-day -day life, but a little more dramatic. And, you know, seeing sports and, and their fans all these years and playing sports, I realized the importance of a team showing their support. I mean, I, the fans showing their support for a team. I realized the importance of fans showing their support for a team when I was a kid playing baseball and all that kind of stuff, those sports. And it eventually evolved into this, to show that I'm on Team Earth. I think that Team Earth has a little bit of a publicity problem, that a lot of us who take actions for the planet are incognito in, in public. Yeah, you might post something on your Facebook timeline, or you might have a little sign on your bike or car or home that says something about what you feel about the conservation of our, protecting our air, water, and land, and such. But most people are incognito like spies. You know, they are walking around and we very, very meticulously pick out our clothes, decide the, just the right eyeglasses style or haircut style or shoes or whatever. But when it comes to taking a stand for our planet, I think that we're missing the boat. A lot of us who are peaceful warriors for the planet. You can be peaceful, but still show what you believe in. You know, I'll bet you've got some logos hidden or visible on you showing your allegiance to some clothing companies. You haven't ripped those things off. In fact, you might still proudly wear them to some degree. And I think that it's about time that we give more street cred to Team Earth, to our commitment to take actions for the planet. A lot of people do. It's really great. Some great t-shirts and things out there. But I'm saying get a little gritty about it. You know, Take a marker and put it on your white business shirt, on the lapel or on the sleeve of your shirt to show what you're committed to. We have to make some major leaps if we're going to even have a biosphere. And one of those would be to start showing every day that you are taking actions for the planet to get the conversation going in daily talk. Now, I'm not, not talking about all the time, but 1% of your conversation a day, I don't think it's too much to ask. 1% of your conversation to talk about how are we going to extend the life of our biosphere today. 1%, maybe 5%, or if you want to go like Earthman, maybe 15, 20%. I don't do it all the time, and people think I'm extreme in the degree to which I might talk about how important it is to take specific actions. Yet, I don't talk about it all the time. I don't think about it all the time. But we've got to think about it more if we are going to survive. Again, some scientists say that 2035 is a time when we could lose by that time. Again, 2035 is a date at which some scientists are saying we could lose 98% of all life by that time. Now, if there's a slim possibility of that, I hope so. If there's no possibility of that, great. But some are saying there is. And even if it were a slim possibility, I'm going to try to stop it because it's just not right that we're wiping this thing out for plastics that we throw away, these single-use plastics, 45% of the energy, the waste that we are, are committing, uh, the waste that we are 
45% of the amount of energy that we use in our society is for products and food. The production, mining, the making, the shipping, the consuming, and the getting rid of. So a lot of people say, oh, it's got to be at that federal level. 45%, 42 to 45% of our pollution is from the stuff we buy. From the stuff we buy. We can't just elect people to take care of this problem. We've got to take also actions in our lives. And then let's elect people to help take care of this problem. But people lived for years without this level of waste. And we can do it too. And you can still have fun. You can still have fun in your life. I'm still having a blast, you know. Do I seem too serious right now? Well, you can still have a blast. You can still sing and walk and dance and, and, and enjoy the light and the smell and all that without buying that stuff and throwing it away because you think you don't have the extra time to carry your own containers and make your own or do your own garden or help some gar gardeners out next door or something. It's just too soon, 2035, to lose 98% of all life, including humans. It's just too soon to let that happen. We are at a crucial, crucial time right now. It's weird to be living in the most crucial time. But our planet is warming at about 1% of our 100 million years. I mean, the sun itself is increasing in lum lumosity by 1% every 100 million years. The more we mess up the climate now, the more serious the implications are in relationship to messed up climates in the past. CO2 has been over 3,000 parts per million in the past. So a lot of people say, oh, in the past the CO2 has been up high too. But the sun is warmer than it used to be. We can't make the same kind of mistakes that the ecosystem made on its own before because of some volcanoes and and that started fires around the planet and because of that meteor that started fires around the planet that created CO2 that then released a bunch of sequestered methane that warmed up the planet that then the algae um, took out of the system. It worked in the ocean to take a whole lot of that CO2 out to bring the planet temperature back down. We can't make that kind of mistake now because the sun is hotter. So. That's a little bit of the story.